Hi there, this is Nathan Cope from NathanCope.com. In this video we're going to be taking a look at the motherboard that we chose for our first build and going through each component specifically on the motherboard just, just so um, my students who are sort of new to this have a really really solid understanding of what each of the components on the motherboard does. So let's start out right away here. I have compiled four different images for this lesson. Um, <clears throat> two very simple ones and then two that are actually images of the motherboard themselves uh, just to be able to show you exactly what each part looks like as if you were looking at the board. I'm starting out with with these drawings first though just so it's a little bit clearer to understand and that the knowledge can be transferred from motherboard to motherboard. Because each motherboard looks a little bit different, but the ports themselves will generally have the same kind of layout. Um, so let's get started right away here. This is the, the back of the motherboard. This is the, this is the piece that sticks out of the back of your case that you would see where you would plug everything into. So over here on the left, we have PS2 connectors. PS2 connectors are an older style uh, connection from way back. We don't really use them anymore. You'll see a lot of motherboards don't even have these anymore, but these are for keyboards and mice only. Next we have an HDMI port. This is for video. Um, HDMI actually has audio going through this port as well as video. Uh, if you ever want to look up the HDMI standard, it'll give you a little bit a uh, better understanding of what it is, but this is the only kind of video on, on newer machines that has audio going through it as well. Next we have DVI. Um, DVI is sort of sort of a, a, a mid-range connector, meaning it's, it's not that old, but it's not, it's kind of going away as well, uh, mainly because it's, it's tough to support higher resolutions, especially with the 4K resolutions. Uh, coming up. And next we have the VGA port, which you've, I'm sure you've seen many times. This is the most common. It's very old. Uh, the standard is very old, but you'll find that um, it's used a lot because, it, actually in my opinion, the reason why they, they stick around so much is because of businesses and their projectors, and the projectors are all using VGA, which is what this port is. So it's really hard to sort of get businesses to move to a more modern uh, connection without spending too much money. Okay, but this will probably still be around for a while. I haven't seen many motherboards take this away just yet. All right, so next up we have USB ports, but you'll notice that these USB ports are blue. The plastic connector in the middle is blue. That signifies to you that it's a USB 3.0 port. And the important thing to know about that is not all devices can use that. Um, not all devices can use the speed that's available. It's much faster than older USB. Um, but uh, I have had issues using older USB devices with USB 3.0. So be careful about that just be sure that the device you're connecting is USB 3.0 compatible before you start using it. All right, next up here is we have, this is our, our network port, our LAN port. This is where you would connect to a, a, a network or a, you know, hardline internet in your house. Most folks use wireless these days, um, but if you are sitting pretty close to your internet equipment, your router and your modem, you could connect directly here this is also the port that is used very heavily in, in business. Um, most business computers are connected hardline via the network port, the, the LAN, the Ethernet. Okay. Next up here is the older style USB. This is probably USB 2.0, slower speed, but the most common. And then we've got our audio jacks. Um, you notice the different colors. That really just signifies what goes into those ports. And just off memory, green is generally your audio out. That's what that's where your audio will play out of. Uh, pink, I believe, is microphone, and blue is line in or 
um, it's it's your rear surround speakers. It really depends on the manufacturer of how that's set up. All right, so that's a basic rundown of the ports in the back. Let's take a look at the motherboard in a little bit of a more um, complete image. And that's this guy right here. I'll try and zoom in here so we don't get too lost. Um, and you can <clears throat> and you can see hopefully the print isn't too small. But what we, what we looked at before on the on the first image is actually this this side over here is what we were just looking at. The audio, the LAN, the USB, the DVI and VGA, the HDMI and the keyboard and mouse ports. This is just the motherboard now sitting down uh, flat and we're looking at the top of it. It's as if you're laying your computer on its side and we're looking down into the case. Okay, so again, you know, these are the ports that we just went through, so I'm not going to go through those again. It's pretty obvious what they are, but let's take a look at some of the other things on here. This ATX12V up here at the top, this is for additional power from the motherboard. That'll come out of your power supply. Uh, CPU fan, this is where you would connect, this is where you connect the, 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 the fan that's going to sit on top of this which is your processor. This is where your processor is going to sit. And the fan that is sitting on top of it will connect this to this, um, this plug right here in order to supply power to the fan. Okay, and while we're on the processor, this is where your processor will sit. You know, we'll actually go over how we, we put in a processor in fairly lengthy detail. Uh, so we have a really good guide to go by in order to do that. But to give you a basic gist, this little this little lever right here is is popped up, and then a CPU is is sat in the middle there, and then we put some thermal grease on it, spread it around, and then we actually attach this the CPU fan on top of the CPU <clears throat> and on top of the heatsink. Next up here is our memory banks, our dim slots here. For this particular motherboard, there is only two. You'll see some boards that have four, sometimes even six or eight, especially if you get, get up to server motherboards. But you'll notice here that there's a specific type that goes on these, DDR3. And, you know, we'll talk about that a little bit as far as memory and different types and whatnot. But you can't see it in this, in this picture, but there's actually two clips on the sides here. <clears throat> you, you would... Pull the clips apart, put the memory in, use your your you know your your thumb strength and really get it in there so all the contacts are there. You know, don't be shy. And then you'll find that the clips will actually pop right into place, and then you can just secure them a little better by pushing the clips in, making sure they're 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 really in there. All right. So next up here is our power. This will come directly from the power supply. Um, you'll notice that power supplies will actually have this power connector split. In other words, you'll have a section at the end here that will actually be cut out and you actually have to put, you know, this section connected and then this section connected afterwards. And the reason for that is for, for compatibility with other motherboards that may not use all of those ports. So you have to make sure that all of these these, this entire plug is filled when you plug the power in. So once, when you first plug the big power plug in, you're going to see that, okay, well, why isn't this the right size? Well, if you, if you look at the cables coming out of the power supply, you will find that there's another itty-bitty one that needs to sort of go in there as well. Okay? Let's slide down here. Let me see if I can zoom in <clears throat> a little bit here so you can see these numbers. So, see here where it says SATA, SATA 6G564, and then over here, 3, 2, 1. These, these are where you actually plug in your permanent storage devices, your hard drives, your CD drives. Um, you might even have a, a, a card reader that reads flashcards and, and, and uh you know, SD cards or whatever from cameras, those would plug into these ports here. The cable would run from here to your to your drives. 
Alrighty, so there's this that's actually a pretty decent amount. There's six of them on this board. Next up here is speaker. Speaker, um, you really won't see <clears throat> many systems use this anymore. It's really just a, a way to tell when your system is booting. You'll get the single beep at the boot or if your system has issues. Generally, I only see people use this when they're trying to debug an issue with the computer. Okay, so a, 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 a speaker would plug directly into these into this port here. Next up here is F panel. This is the front panel on, on your case that would plug into this for, for your power switch and your reset and, and your lights for hard drives and whatnot. You'll find that with other motherboards, this actually may be split up into a whole bunch of tiny little um, sort of breakouts of what they do, you'll see that there's <clears throat> that there's like two um, two pins for like a hard drive light. You'll have two pins for a reset button. You'll have two pins for a, a power button. So you really have to look really closely at that and make sure that each plug that's coming out of your case is plugged into the the correct uh, pins here. This one looks like it's using a, a standard. I've seen this seen this before. Um, you'll find that a lot of cases try to abide by that standard, but they also sometimes have each of the cables separated. So again, you know, PCs are, are very, uh, there's a lot of different types. There's a lot of different, um, you know, manufacturers that are trying to, to abide by standards and you'll find some that don't. This F panel thing is relatively new. Um, <clears throat> So you'll find, like I said, there's going to be motherboards that have individual breakouts. So just watch out for that. Alrighty, so let's move on here. This is the BIOS chip. This is where, when you, when you first boot up a computer and you see that, that screen that says, you know, Asus or uh, Dell or HP, all of that information is stored in this little chip. This is basically the, the starting point of when your computer turns on the instructions. It, so there's, there's, there would be no way for the system to, to know what it is without something to sort of kick it into gear. And that's what this does. BIOS means basic input output system or software. And it tells the rest of the components on this board sort of how to talk to each other and you know to give instructions to get the processor and whatnot going and running all right so let's move on here we've got uh, USB uh, plugs here these pins these, these are these are so you can connect more ports besides the ports that are on the back of the, the motherboard that we were looking at a moment ago these are for the the USB ports that are actually on the case perhaps they're in the front of the case or there there's a there's somewhere on the case that you want to have more USB ports, you would plug those into here, into these ports. And this is the same thing here. This is this, the, the USB 3 uh, version of those. Okay, so let's move on here. This clear TC, I'm not sure what TC means, but usually when you see something like this, you see something that says CLR. That means this, this resets all of the settings in the BIOS, this chip over here. So in case you were messing around on the BIOS and you changed some settings and it really borked your system from booting, you can just short out this guy right here and that resets the BIOS and you can get back to the, to the defaults. It's a real lifesaver sometimes. All right, let's move on here. Com ports. Wow, com ports are really, really old from the first PCs. COM ports are a very, very basic serial communications device. The, the first motherboard, I'm sorry, the first uh, modems that were used to like connect to AOL long, long time ago used external uh, modems that would connect to these ports. These are rarely, rarely used now, but they, they keep them on motherboards for backwards compatibility. So next up is uh, SPDIF out. This is digital audio, um, and this board supports that. 
Uh, next up is AAFP. I believe this is the audio front panel. So if you have a front panel with a whole bunch of audio ports that you would, you would want to use those ports, you would plug those cables into here. And I believe this is, this is pretty standard. You're not going to see a whole bunch of different um, cables like line in and headphone and, and microphone and all that. It's pretty standard across the board. Okay, so let's see. What else do we have here? Oh, yeah, this is pretty important. Uh, this guy right here is, is a, a chassis fan plug. Uh, this would power a fan that is running on the case. Or you could have it running from, from anywhere, really. It's just a way to have the motherboard supply power to a fan, but also have it report back to the computer uh, things like temperature and fan speed that you could can control. Uh, TPM is a security... Uh, it's a trusted platform module. That's what it was. It's used for... Uh, let's see, let me give you an example. Let's say you booted up your computer... And you were in a business that was really, really high profile security, like say the FBI. This could connect to um, a key that, or, or like a USB storage thing or whatever that has a whole bunch of keys on it, security keys that gets you into the system. Without that hardware key, you could not get into the system. That's kind of what this is. All right. Um, these are just sort of the placement of the different chips on your motherboard that do different things. This takes care of your I.O., your input-output. Um, this is uh, called a bridged, bridged chip. This takes care of other devices on the board, you know, your, your controllers for your, your SATA drives. Um, there's just a lot done on here that the CPU doesn't take care of. The, the, this is sort of like the, the bridge point from your CPU to all this other stuff on the board to handle that. All right, let's see. Ah, yes, our PCI slots. So we have PCI. This is the old style PCI. Um, been around for a long time. This is generally used for things like enhanced audio cards or maybe a TV tuner. Um, you know, I don't see PCI slots used very often in home systems or, or basic user systems. Um, PCI Express 1, this is, again, this is a, uh, this is another type of PCI slot. This is more modern, and again, you'll only see things like audio, enhanced audio cards in here. Uh, maybe some specialized communication cards you'll see go in there, and they're, they're very small. The slot's very small. This guy right here is your video card workhorse. This is where your video card would plug in. Um, it's very, very fast. You know, your video card is really the only thing that goes in here, generally. Um, and, you know, we'll take a look at that later, what the port actually looks like uh, in the next pictures. And then the battery here, all this does is, is stores and saves the settings that you have in here. It saves the time of the system. It basically, the really, really important important stuff that your system needs to remember when it's off. So that's it for the uh, that's it for the the drawing um, images I have here. Let's move on.